Today is the last part to finish this uh, CNC plasma cutting machine. I don't know if you noticed that I installed some wheel here so I can move it around and I uh, pull it out of my garage to cut it like outside because uh, I don't have the water bucket underneath so I don't want to burn down my uh, house. So whenever I want to cut something, I just got to wheel it outside and cut it in my driveway. Here the control unit of this machine. I have two power supplies. Uh, they are 36 volt, 10 amp. One of them will be powering this two stepper motor driver for the Y axis. And this one is for the X axis. It will be powered by this uh, power supply. And this one is the Z axis. It will use the same power supply. This is the control board, INR motion, must be compatible. And this is the DC step down. I just want to step down from 36 volt to 24 volt to power this board. This is the relay to control the torch. And uh, I will show you the setup and uh, how to make your plasma cutter CNC compatible later. The hardest part of the wiring of this machine is not about like, soldering all the wire connecting them to here. It's about like, arranging the wires so the machine can move around like, smoothly without tangling any cables and things. So to do that, I just want to use two of these drag chains just I bought for fairly cheap on Amazon. So they will be big enough to like, arrange all the wire and uh, like cable for the torch. One of them is for the Y axis and one of them for the X axis. And the hardest one is to install it on the Y axis like this. So it can uh, move around without touching this plate. To do this, I have these two pieces. It looks like an L on the side. I just glue the two pieces together. And to install them on here, I just want to drill two holes here, uh, M5. And uh, this part will help to lower the plate a bit down here. So it doesn't touch the edge of this plate so the machine can move forward like this without touching the plate and after install this like this I can to install a piece of wood like this and uh, install the drag chain on it and for the x-axis this is a lot easier I just cut a piece of plywood and uh, install it on here and I uh, put the drag chain on top like this it would be a lot easier so let me just install the drag chain uh, connect the wire and show you a little bit the wiring of this unit I think I'm done with running the wire here on the X and Z axis. So on the Z axis, I have this arm installed on it with some screw to support the drag chain on the X axis. So the cable runs through this uh, drag chain, go all the way out here. And I have this plate to support this drag chain and the cable go into this drag chain. So on this axis, I just have the two arm here, just I install it and then I put this plate on it. To support this drag chain. Now for the wiring at the back here, I have uh, three connectors. This one have nine pins, but I only use eight for the two stepper motors for the Y axis. This one have four pins going to here through two cables, and this one have four pins for the stepper motor on the X axis. This one is for the Z axis. It have six pins. Four of them is for the stepper motor. Two of them is for the limit switch on the floating head setup. So let me just explain a little bit the wiring on this control unit. The only thing that is special here on this control unit are these two stepper motor driver. I use them to control the stepper motor for the Y axis. So normally each of these stepper motor driver will be controlled by one port here. But I only use the Y port to control both of them at the same time. So the control signal just connected parallelly from this one to this one. So to have the two stepper motor just rotate in the opposite direction, I just swap the wire from channel A to channel B from this one compared to this one and uh, that's it. So now let me just show you how all axes move with this setup.
Okay, so as you can see, that's all the axis is moved really smoothly. The feet rate for the fast movement on the X and Y axis are 12 meters per minute. On the Z axis, it's moved a bit slower because it's used the less screw and you don't have much distance, so you don't need it to be fast and you need the precision. So the feed rate is only 1.5 meter per minute, but it, compared to normal CNC, it's more than fast enough. Okay, so the next part, I just want to try to configure the floating head setup and also test the function of the relay. To test the function of the floating head setup, right now I don't have the torch installed, so I just want to use this trip as a torch. And after playing with the demo version of Sheetcam a little bit, I finally were able to set it up correctly. And let me just zoom in and show you how it works. As you can see, just it worked as expected, so let me just show you how I set it up in Max 3 and Street Cam. Here in Max 3, you just go to port and pins. Here, I just going to skip directly to the configuration of the limit switch on the floating head setup. So I just go to input signal and I can go down and you have two options. The first option is to enable the Z home, so you just enable this and then uh, put in port number 3 and pin number 2 because uh, I connect the limit switch to the input number 2 and the other wire to the ground so you can do this or the other option is to go down a bit further until you see probe and you just enable it and also just put port number 3 and pin number 2 for this type of R&R &R motion breakout board and uh, I just going to take a chance to show you also the torch setup here in output signal I will connect the torch relay on the output number 1 so I just enable this and then put port number 3 pin number 1 and that's it and uh, here in spindle setup you just uncheck this and make sure that here the output number is number one where you like output the signal to the relay and uh, here just uncheck this you're not going to use this and uh, that's it you click apply and okay so now the setup is ready uh, and uh, that's it for match three let me just show you the sheet cam Okay, so here I just download the demo version of sheet cam so it can only do like 180 line of code and here I just go to options machine and go to post processor and to configure the floating head setup you will have to use the max 3 plasma TSG with uh, scriber and backlash compensation for a post processor so you just click on this and choose this and then you do like edit post so here in the edit part the most important uh, parameter are these two the reference read rate is just how fast you want the torch to go down until it uh, click the limit switch. For me, 800 probably fine. And uh, for the switch offset here, you will have to measure it uh, manually. It like set the tip of the torch as it barely touch the surface, and then you keep going down until it click. For me, I found it about three millimeter. If you use different type of limit switch, it might be different. So that's it. You also just need to go down here and uh, the reference home. Here, if you enable the Z home and uh, disable the probe, you're going to put it to true. And for me, because I use the prop uh, setup, so I going to put it false. For me, I don't have the TSC, the torch high control, so I put it to new. So it just means just I don't have it. I just turn it off.
So I just save and now I'm done with setting up the floating head. So that's all I need to do for the floating head setup to work uh, as you see. So now you are done with the post processor part. The next step I just going to show you very quickly how to generate a G code with uh, that post processor. So you just go to file, import drawing and choose a DXF file. And uh, this one I just designed it very quickly. It only have a square and it is in metric and it have a circle in the middle to be cut out. So here it is. And uh, I just going to create a simple tools here, plasma, 1.5 curve. I don't know, I just uh, create randomly for now. And then I just go to operation, plasma cut. And uh, here, as you can see, I had the feed rate of uh, 1000 millimeter per minute. And that's about it. And then here, I just choose arc. And this, you will have to play around to find out the best parameter. I don't care right now because I, I actually haven't done any of this yet. So I just click OK. So now here I have the two paths. What I'm going to do next is just click on the P icon here. It's post processing. So I just save it. That is about it. So I already save it here. Then I click cancel. For you it will click save. And that's it. So the next step I just going to use the same two paths here to simulate the torch function. I have a bit hiccup with this type of relay here, it's solid state and I thought that it would be faster and more powerful um, but uh, somehow that the output of this board couldn't trigger the relay here so every time I connect the output of this board to the relay here the voltage just dropped from like 5 volt to like 1.6 and couldn't turn on this relay uh, I don't know why so my solution for this is just to replace this relay with this type of smaller relay. It will be a bit slower too, but uh, I think it will be fine for this application. Uh, and I also need uh, an external power supply for this. So I just going to use a DC step down to step down from 24 volt to like 10 volt to power this. And uh, that is the solution. And uh, I will just uh, replace this one with this setup and I'll show you the next step of testing. Here, the way I set it up is that when this relay is triggered, the LED light will be on, and when it's off, the light is off, obviously, like right now. So later on, I'm just going to stick this LED light on the tip of the blue bottle, so every time the torch supposed to be on to cut, the light will be on. So that's why I will see that the two parts work correctly. So let me just turn on and off the output to see if the light is on and off correctly. Okay, so now the torch is supposed to be on and the light is on. Torch off, light off. So, so let me just stick it on the torch setup and see how it works. Okay, so now I'm just going to start the two path. Okay, so as you can see, it's worked like perfectly. So now I'm ready to connect the torch to the relay. For the torch, I just got this one from eBay for $30. It is compatible with the plasma cutter, Cut50, just I bought also from eBay. So it has three connectors here. You have uh, this one for compressed air, this one's for pilot arc, and this one for the trigger. And the one that you are interested in the most is the trigger one. So I don't want to modify the torch or the plasma cutter. So I bought this pair of connector, female and male. So it fit into this connector like perfectly like this. And this one will be plugged on the plasma cutter. So that way I don't need to modify either the torch or the plasma cutter. 
So now what I'm going to do is just I'm going to solder the wire from here to here and the other wire just go from here to the relay and the output of that relay go into this connector and that's it. So that is a very easy way to make your plasma cutter CNC compatible. And one thing to notice that you should buy a plasma cutter, just have the pilot arc. That way you can start the arc without touching the steel and that will make it a lot easier for the CNC plasma cutter to work. I made a cable with two connectors connected to each end and in the middle of the cable I just opened the shell here and I cut one of the conductor so each end of the conductor will enter into one pin of the relay here so whenever the relay is closed the conductor will be conductive so now this connector of the cable I just connect it to the connector on the torch like this and tighten it make sure it doesn't move And these three connectors, I just connect it to the plasma cutter as normal. And for the torch to work with this setup, I just take a zip tie to tighten down the trigger like this. So it's always closed and I just like attach it on the ends of the torch like this. So now I only need to attach this on the machine and my CNC plasma cutter is ready to cut. Next step, I'm just going to show you how it actually cut an example of bracket or something. Okay guys, so I was about to attach the torch to this uh, torch holder, but then I figured that when the torch is cutting, it would have compressed air just blow out from the tip, and it's like 70 psi and very close to the sheet mirror, so it might just like blow this like up like this, and uh, the machine won't cut like evenly or like as expected so I will need to figure out something just be like kind of like the spring setup to press it down so this flooring head setup still work but it's always have a pressure to like press it down so the air doesn't blow it up so let me just figure out something on the computer and make it and uh, attach it here I just modified the floating head setup here a little bit so I have this angle aluminum just add on here and I take the chance to redesign the torch holder here so I have the four board just go from the back here to the front and I can tighten down with the bracket so it's really solid now and just take a closer look at this piece and the setup here on this angle it's aluminum I have a hole in the middle here just I thread it with M8 and thread and I have the M8 both go through I have the two nuts on top and on the bottom so I can jam lock the bolt uh, so it depends on uh, how long you want it to be like on this side so make sure that the distance on this side just uh, you have to click the limit switch before you reach the bolt here so mine I just adjust it that way and uh, here the nuts and the washer here you can adjust the distance uh, to adjust the tension of the spring if you want more tension you can add on more like washer or nuts so here I think this is enough and it just keep pushing this down even when it has strong air just blow underneath so this way you have more pressure to push the floating head down without add on any weight on it so the z-axis still work the same so now I only need to run the cable for the torch through the drag chain and then I'm ready to cut. I think the setup is ready to do the first cut here. I'm really nervous because I haven't done any type of testing yet. I'm just going to cut a beer opener on this piece of aluminum. It's only 2.5 millimeter thick but I think for testing it will be fine. Because I haven't done any type of calibration on this machine, that's why I'm not going to cut any type of bracket on this because uh, I might not be able to use it later. Just a beer opener right now. So let's see how it cut.
as you can see that the machine kind of works correctly but uh, the cut is not really pretty yet because uh, I don't have any experience on this I don't know like if the feed rate is too fast or too slow and uh, the distance between the torch and the uh, aluminum piece is too far or too close I don't know so let me just try again another piece this time I just going to go a bit slower and reduce a little bit the distance between the torch and the surface Okay guys, so the second cut is even worse than the first one. I don't know, I need to play around with this a little bit and I'll show you later. I just did another cut with a steel sheet and I think it's cut a lot better, it's a bit cleaner but it's still very messy. I just need to spend more time to find out what type of parameters just I need to get a clean cut. But uh, as long as the machine works correctly, I think it's just a matter of time. So I just going to keep playing with it and uh, maybe I will post another video about all type of calibration for this type of uh, CNC plasma cutting to get a clean cut. 